and you're very welcome to the Music As podcast series. I'm Louise O'Connor, a fiddle player from Clare, and this is an interview series where I talk to interesting people about all things musical, joining the dots between music and lots of different areas. This series will have a focus on Clare-based artists, and you can follow the series Music As podcast on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can listen on all the usual platforms and please subscribe if you enjoy it. I'm delighted to welcome my guest today, Owen O'Neill. Owen is a musician, radio presenter and podcaster. He came to Doolin for an afternoon 40 years ago and has been living and breathing traditional music in Clare ever since. As Christy Moore said, there's no better person on Irish radio for supporting our native music and song. He has fostered a huge community of music lovers internationally through his radio programmes on Clare FM and was honoured for his outstanding contribution to traditional music in Clare with the Moore Glore Award in 2015. He has played bazooki on over 100 recordings on his own albums In Session, In Session 2, with his band The Fiddle Case and recorded his own original songs including The Galway Waltz. He has backed some of the all-time greats, including Sharon Shannon, Christy Moore, Mary Costey and Martin Hayes. He's well known for his extremely welcoming sessions with players of all ages and has mentored Manny to perform and record. I've played in Manny of own sessions and he's always exceptionally welcoming to newcomers and usually manages to find and encourage a song or a dance out of the listeners. I chat to Owen about the ups and downs of life as a musician the self-protection that's needed, the wild sessions of Doolin in the 70s and 80s where he learnt his craft. And carrying on from my last conversation with Nuala Kennedy, we chat about his experiences of playing with Kitty Kays, the concertina player from West Clare, who kicked off her music career in her 70s. I opened the chat with a clip from the song he wrote called Ennestynum, which he performs with the fiddle case. Wandering round the streets of Naples Letting whiskey kill the fear Round and round Italian circles I can't find no comfort here Take me up to Ennis Diamond That's the place I want to be I want to live in Ennis Diamond And have you wake up next to me How are you doing? Thanks so much for coming and talking to me. How are you, Louise? It's a pleasure to be here. Great stuff, great. We were actually in the thick of it last night playing a session down in cruises. So, yeah. We're continuing on. We're continuing on (laughs) the conversation. So, yeah, it was a great um, kind of pre-prequel, I suppose, to talking to you today. So tell us about your session in cruises and how yeah, that I've runs. Been, I've been playing in cruises for, for years now. And um, at the moment, I'm, 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 since the lockdown finished and all that, and we're back, I'm playing with a, a great musician called Clara Butler, who you know. Um, Clara is a, a singer and a, a flute player. And it, I, I, over the, the quiet times, I, I really enjoyed um, working on songs and stuff like that, and songs became mm. very important to me mm. because the sessions didn't exist. And also, I'd probably been sessioned out, so the break did me no harm. Mm. Because I, I would play every night, Louise, still do. 
I, I play music all the time mm. and uh, I love playing music all the time and sometimes uh, like for me the, to have two years of an alternative life was a gift, a real mm. gift. Um, when you're self-employed the, 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 the major feeling you have when you're not working is guilt mm. and with the um, the quiet time, I don't like saying all those horrible words to describe it, but the, the quiet, quiet time, time we had, yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Yeah. The quiet time, we, the, the, there was an absence of guilt, there was no guilt, we couldn't play, there was no music, and um, it was a great thing for a lot of musicians. Mm. Now, it was probably a terrible thing for a, a lot of other musicians, but I went into songwriting, and I, I also started working with Clara, in a, uh, Clara Butler, in a bigger way, and um, she actually did an album of songs where she, during the very quiet time, when we weren't even allowed to see each other, nobody was allowed to meet up. The, uh, the in, initially, she would send me WhatsApp um, tunes of her playing guitar and going la 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 la. And then I went down to Ballyalla Lake here in Ennis and I'd be listening to her la 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 her tunes. And I put words to it and we did about 20 songs in, in about a month. You know, Amazing. Yeah, no, it was very productive. And then I wrote a lot of songs myself. So what's your question? Oh, cruises were back <laughs> and uh, it's a whole new gang. And and and, and uh, we, we we're very happy with it. We do Tuesday nights um, and Sunday lunchtime uh, gigs there, and it's it's very affable. It's very it's very friendly, and it's and Sundays particularly all age groups, mm. from seven year olds to, to ninety year olds, and I kind of like that. And Clara is it plays tunes that it's accessible, you know, mm. for most people. Mm. It's a very particular kind of session, like there's very generally a very steady pace and it's yeah. very, there's a lovely it, it, swing you know, to the music. Maybe. Well, yeah. Last night, definitely, because last night was uh, there was no visitors there as such. Yeah. There was more people up at the bar that were just out for a night and it, it was nice to have the tunes there. For them. So we weren't performing in any mm. sense. There was about 15 musicians, we were all playing for ourselves. But if there was a load of people in from Australia or America, We'd be singing songs, getting them joined yeah. in, and then it would be, and uh, the tunes would liven up. That'd yeah. be my job. That's the only yeah, job I have yeah. is is to like I could change the atmosphere fairly fast, you know, and I'd enjoy that very much too. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother giving your heart and soul away if, if it's not needed. Yeah. I, we, again, we play every night, so we're not hungry to do that. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. the great thing about ah tomorrow night we can do it a different way, you know. Yeah. But it should be different every night, I think. Yeah, it's um. trying to involve or include anyone from might be shy about playing or yeah. singing like you're it's been great for me to have to come back to Ennis anyway and I very much appreciate that so yeah but I think that's inclusivity I can't understand quite <laughs> it could be any other way yeah um, yeah my, my rule of thumb would be if you're if you're not interfering with the the the, the the session in a bad way you're mm. very welcome mm. in other words that for me there, there's a everybody's welcome what makes a great session for you what is oh, the, the, the session the, experience the whole room being involved the, the whole room being involved. Mm. The, you know it, for me it's 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 the musicians are just as uh, important are no more important than the mm. person at the bars the person in the bars you know with the bar but 20 yards away is involved that's even better you know mm. they're, they're when that person is smiling down, then I say this is a good session, you know. Mm. Or so even in in in, um, in different ways, it, it doesn't have to be highly emotionally involved. I remember playing in in um, Corofin for a good few Sunday evenings with Breed O'Gorman. Breed O'Gorman, the flute player, was a great flute player, and there was a lot of men up at the bar um, drinking pints, and they they're back to us, but they were listening, and I we you know you could feel it, and it, it's it's a lovely thing. So every time she changed a tune there'd be a very slight raise of the shoulder or something. Yeah. And you knew you were playing to a good audience. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be people roaring and telling you how great you are. Yeah, yeah. In fact, they might not mention you at all, but you just know that uh, the, the room, the, the, the music works and you're in the right place. Yeah. Hmm. I was listening to your, your, your interview series you did through the lockdown, the Owen O'Neill podcast, and it was, it was a fantastic, like, social history. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, gathering of kind of social history of with musicians talking to them about 
their their lives and some of some of the older musicians and talking about what uh, the clear sessions were like back in the 70s i don't think we're going back that yet but yeah. probably the 80s i think there, 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 there was nobody johnny mcdonough would have the, the yeah, history yeah, about yeah. galway music all, all from from the 70s on all right ringo that was a great interview i enjoyed it mm. i enjoyed it I, I, uh, let me see who we, we can go through who i did i did uh, christy mcnamara i did luca bloom i did susan o'neill i did katie Thiesby, i did laura mulcahy mm. here in ennis i did um tony o'leary was the last pair i did mm. um, Sean Tyrrell mm. has passed away since. There's probably about three or four more I'm not mentioning. But um, I, I, I really enjoy them and I'm glad I did them because two people are gone already. Mm. Tony O'Leary passed away a few months ago. That was a, I found it difficult. That, that sort of, I did him about 18 months ago mm. and it was such a, for me, a powerful interview of a, mm. of, of, of a troubled character who wasn't afraid at all to say, mm. talk about his troubles. He lost his leg. In a, in, a, in a road accident and he was a he was a pretty violent man and mm. um, but it, it, when i was talking to him i would have known him through his through his career i don't mean really violent now i mean troubled mm. in a pub like he'd be he could be, he'd be a slap like mm. maybe or if someone he could get angry and he was awkward with drink because he, he because of his wooden leg uh, he, he was a big huge man so uh, that was a brilliant interview because i would have for me it was a brilliant interview because i would have not been a friend of tony Hmm. And then I did the interview when he was 66 at this stage, 67. I would have known him in his 30s and 40s and 50s. Hmm. And I would have steered clear because it wasn't my buzz at all. But after I did the interview with him, I loved the interview. Myself and Adam Shapiro, Adam does the sound for me. Hmm. And um, we, had, we arrived up in his caravan in, in the scanner. And he, he was himself and the dog were on the bed drinking, drinking uh, cans. And I, I'd never done an interview where I'd started the interview having an opinion of somebody. I ended the interview having a, the very same opinion of him, but loving him. Mm. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> yeah. I think honesty is a great thing mm. for me. And so I, I haven't had to do one since. Mm. You know, I haven't, um, I, I'm not interested in people that are successful, mm. you know, that have won a class and, mm. you know, traveled the world and played to 4,000 people every night. Unless they have a, another side to their, to their, to, to their success, which mm. I'd be fi trying to find out. I think musicians are lonely mm. and I think uh, it, there's nothing wrong with that uh, mm. and, I, uh, and I think that's maybe shines through a little bit in the maybe uh, the people I picked or else the musicians but um, I, 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 Katie sees me, I, I didn't mention Katie, Katie's a, a very honest woman as well mm. and, you know and Luca Bloom, they, they would all talk about the, the a lot of mu full-time musicians and maybe part-time I'm not sure because I only know as a full-time musician you mm. feel that low after the high and yeah. that low can be a little bit you mean a little bit hurtful, you know, not hurtful, but um, painful. Yeah, you know? yeah, uh, yeah. You were your interview style was it was um, so you were really seeking that honesty from people, like weren't you? And you were really um, because I know it myself. Yeah, yeah. So I I, yeah. I would have empathy with, with you yeah. know I know I know the people. I didn't yeah. know Laura so well. I didn't know Susan O'Neill so well. Yeah. Um, but I, I knew all the others. We yeah. we, we, we soldiered together, yeah. and uh, you know, the, like I wouldn't envy. I'm just back from a tour now of Holland and Belgium with my band, The Fiddle Chase. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to go before, and I've, you know, you're, mm -hmm. it's the one time I'm not self-employed. Mm -hmm. Is it's when I'm with the Fiddle Chase. It was organised, and you know, for me, I like my life here, mm -hmm. and I like my routine, mm -hmm. and my routine keeps me sane. If if if, if that's the Maybe that's a bit strong, maybe saying might be a little bit much, but it keeps me, routine is important to me. Mm. So I didn't expect to enjoy the tour. I love the lads in the band, they're very good to me, they mind me. I'm not good in airports, I'm not good with, you know, I, I, that's why I picked by going to cruises, going to Doolin, mm. going to Lynch. I, I know what, I can handle it, mm -hmm. I'm able for it. Mm. I, I don't like to be taking on something I'm not able for, mm -hmm. uh, or mightn't know what it's going to be like. I nearly can, anyway, went on tour and I loved it. Mm. It was uh, for the first time ever, it was, um, there was a, a huge crowd that knew our music and we hadn't even pushed ourselves, but we've been going to Holland and Belgium for about eight years now. And uh, there's a lot of people there. So we, 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 we had, ended up, we had good crowds and it was a very successful tour, but I wouldn't like that as a lifestyle. Mm. I don't like airports. I don't like sound checks. Yeah, I don't like being yeah. stuck with people all day long. I like, I love, I, I, 
I kind of put my energy, I arrive at my gig at nine o'clock or half nine and all my energy goes out in two hours or three mm -hmm. hours. And then I'm lowering, like a lot of people, I think, you know, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm completely out there with everybody in the room or everybody mm -hmm. in the venue for, for those hours. And it's not because I'm getting paid. I mean, it is because I'm getting paid. That's the reason I'm there. But it's because that's what, that's my release of, that's how I socialize. Yeah. So I kind of socialize like mad during my gig. <laughs> Yeah. And then I kind of run. But anyway, you can socialize with people on your phone now as well. So it's yeah. not as, you know, it's yeah. not much a loner as you think. It takes a lot of energy like that. It does, yeah. It might look like you're up there, you know, having the crack playing tunes, but actually it's a lot of energy to kind of, yeah. you're sort of holding the whole... Well, it's worthwhile. It's, wor it's worthwhile. You well. see, yeah, you know, yeah. when, you, when, you, when you put your energy into, like music, when you're, when you're playing music, and, or, or even I do radio shows as well, I'm clear of them here, like... I don't really worry about criticism because I know one thing, when you're playing music and you're, or you're providing, you're, you're, you're putting on records or CDs for people to, to listen to, you can't be doing any harm really. There's nothing mm. wrong with that. Yeah. So you're, you're in a career where you're, it's not really controversial, you know, you're, you, you know that it's good for people, mm. music is good for people, so, so it's a good thing to do mm. on any level. But yeah. you, 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 you can't give your heart, I've seen people give their heart and soul too much maybe. No, mm. no self protection, and maybe never getting off the stage a little mm. bit, yeah. and uh, that's that's a bit. I, I always worry about those people. I've seen them yeah. so many times over the years. Yeah. They're giving their heart and soul too much. Mm. You have to protect yourself a little bit. Yeah, and it felt like I mean, in those chats that you were talking to all these different people about different levels of self protection, almost mm -hmm. like, and how it was. Yeah, it was really interesting. It was like Ringo was great. Ringo McDonald, like he's yeah. been through it. He's been through a lot. Like Johnny, Johnny's interview was two hours long, and uh, I, I, I wanted to go another two hours because he just he, Johnny drank a lot, mm. an awful lot, and and and, and he was, you know, hopping yeah. around from, from, from. Sometimes he would be on a huge stage, and sometimes he'd be in a small pub. And he's like myself, you know. He. he uh, he, he just enjoys the people and he's not looking to be anything in particularly mm -hmm. just part of it and I, I, I loved his, his because Johnny McDonough is the history of Galway in traditional music because you know he was there as a, the, you know whenever the modern era of music really starts 70, 1973 or 74 Johnny mm -hmm. McDonough was there and he's still there you know so mm -hmm. uh, that interview I, I thought was fabulous because it's history but it's yeah. history from a, a fella looking over the fence side yeah. you know not involved in the you know Johnny would have his troubles mm. and, and his troubles is what makes him beautiful like you know <laughs> yeah yeah like it wasn't it wasn't he was very reflective like you know um, it wasn't all roses like oh no, no 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 it might have seemed from the outside it's all it's all kind of crack but yeah no you know he was um yeah. it, it's it's a different world now because we all were people that just choose to play music for our lives and we by doing that in in, in 30 40 years ago in Johnny's case, 50 years ago. Well, I wanted to be a busker. I left a very, very restrictive Ireland and yet a very wild Ireland in 1979. And um, I was 19, 18, 19 years old and I went off. And it was a big deal to go off then hmm. because, um, you know, a plane, a air flight was very expensive. Nobody traveled by age. So I went, I went uh, down through. England and over, I ended up in Germany and I might as well have been in another planet because you know there was no mobile phones and nobody knew where you'd be so I spent a couple of years, well I'm still doing it, but um, it was a big decision like I studied really hard for my leaving cert, I really I went home at four o'clock after school and I studied till one o'clock in the morning because if I'm going to do it so I'm going to do it right and I got these great results in my leaving cert and I never ever 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 used any of it. My mother got me into this university, that university or something. But I never, I discovered weed and I discovered table football and, you know, so I didn't last three weeks in university. You know, I just had, this, this is great crack, you know. I, like, I, I know now, I met people I liked. Mm. You know, in school I didn't know who I liked because music wasn't there. Mm. It wasn't in my school, in any level, mm. on any level. There was no music, there was no choir, there was no learning how to read music, there was no nothing and it was mm. a big college now you know you think they would have but it didn't and in a way that was good because i didn't know a thing about music and i went off busking and i ended up in, in around up and down from greece up to norway and i kind of um i was more uh, i was so bad to music that i was more a, 
a bottler, we used, you know, I collect for, for good yeah. musicians. So I, I had to say, you know, I, can, I can live like this, you know. And I never actually thought about anything else. And in a way, I'm still a busker, you know. And in fact, I go busking as well now with Paul Kelly again, you know. So I never changed from that. And maybe Ringo didn't either. Maybe we were never, you know, every time I get a big gig in a concert, like that, it's, a, it's a real a surprise and a bonus. Yeah. But that's not really what I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you were really, like, learning on the ground, like, yeah, literally like, on the ground. Like, mm -hmm. Doolin, I, 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 when I came back from Europe, I, I, I walked into a pub in Doolin and actually, it was, it was, I was in Germany, sorry, I was in Europe in 77, 78. I, I walked into Doolin in just the last few days of 1979 and my life completely changed. I mm. found exactly what I was looking for and I, I teamed up with... Kevin Griffin and Kevin Griffin, the banjo player, he was a, a lovely young lad, uh, he was about 16 at the time, and a, and a great, great man from West Limerick arrived into Doolin. Uh, Tony Dalton, a banjo player from West Limerick, and Tony was the first person I'd met that, you know, had never really learned to tune off a, a tape or a, anything like mm. that. You know, he'd learned off his father and his neighbour and his uncle, and he was from uh, Atay in, in West Limerick, and he played a banjo, and uh, he was fantastic. He was a, he was a wildest man I ever met, and I'd met a few wild men, mm. and we used to go travelling in the winter, and a couple of winters, and we'd play every night and do, and I learned without, we never talked about learning, we were just playing all the time. We played all, all day in do in those days, there was 30 of us maybe, every day, all day long, Christy Barry, Johnny Heen, Antonio O'Leary, um, Pat O'Reilly, Christy Heaney. Mick Copper, a German fiddle player, was there for a good few years. Niall Sheedy, Terry Bingham arrived in then in the middle 80s. Yes. A lot of us just loved drinking and having yeah. the crack, you know, and uh, loved playing. And then different people arrived that would make you look at things a different way. Terry Bingham loved the tunes, like he loved it. Yeah. I couldn't figure out Terry Bingham. His hands didn't move and this beautiful sound was coming out of the concertina. He was yeah. unexpressive in... Very expressive by being unexpressive, if you know what I mean. He had long hair and his, his, his lovely little concertina. And the music that came out was new to us. And Mary Custy, I started playing with Mary Custy then. Actually, first I was playing with Sharon Shannon. And myself and Sharon used to play nine gigs a week with Kevin Griffin mostly. And nine gigs a week, we used to do two afternoons and seven nights a week. And like, the funny thing about that is our gigs were between, say, nine and twelve. But we were playing from like 11 in the morning until 9 anyway. But you know, before the gig started, because that's all we wanted to do. Sharon would, would, would be eating her dinner and then she'd be practicing her triplets. You know, that famous triplet she had, to, you know, really yeah. tight. All day long, like we just played music. Living and breathing it. Yeah, and um, that was our university. Yeah. That was like, and that was, so I don't know anything about music. Because I was, I was, um, I learned to this, I played bazooki. Bazookis were quite big in, in, in the bands and stuff, and the Dan and Donald and, and Alec and all are there. But I, I was influenced by seeing a, a small gig in, in Germany of Dolores Kane and, and John Faulkner. Mm. And John Faulkner was playing the bazooki, so I, I, I said I want to get one of them. So I came home and bought a, a bazooki off Joe Foley, and that's when I started, I found Doolin, you know, I had my bazooki, and I had a tuning that a Swiss guy had given me, DADA, -D -A, which was different than the normal tuning. Mm. It's quite normal now, or common enough now, but it was no, I'd never heard about anybody else using it then. And uh, so I had nobody to teach me anything. And I'm not good anyway, I wouldn't be, as an accompanist, I wouldn't be able to listen to a record and say, oh, I can, I learn how to do that. Anyway, I learned this tune and I, 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 Kevin Griffin would be learning tunes in the morning and I'd be sitting with him on the bazooka. And I, uh, I remember the first time I learned how to back a jig, a fellow called Charlie Brown, he was a mad bastard from, uh, from Belfast and he's dead now as well. And he didn't like me, Charlie didn't like me, and he didn't like anybody actually. <laughs> so he, he used to turn his back at me sometimes, he would play at me, and then one day I, I um, he was playing a jig, and I came. I, I, was in the, I was right, I just knew something had happened, and I was right, I was out playing a jig. I could see Charlie turn around, and I said, okay, if he turn around once about me, I'm okay. So that was, he can, that was the start he can of it. Actually, yeah. He can actually face me. <laughs> yeah, no, he, in other words, I was, I was helping him, and that's my job. Yeah. It's, my job is, uh, I'm not a a good accompanist in, 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 the, in the way of other great accompanists. My, I, I'm more an energy person, mm. so my rhythm wouldn't be, you know, it would be hopping from whatever's going on in my head, and yeah. I might bring the musician with me. But I hope yeah. what I can do is make a certain type of musician that has a lot of nya. I like the musicians that have a lot of nya, you know, pulling and dragging out notes and stuff like yeah. that. And 
you know, I, I wouldn't be good with Kaylee Van music. You know, yeah, I wouldn't be able yeah, to. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to do anything with that. But uh, uh, like uh, most musicians I play with have the have the yeah. you know that groove that I like. Yes, and if they do. don't, I, I I I kind of impose it on them a little bit. Yeah, so yeah. I, I could do that, and then hopefully, what my job would be to, to to make that musician comfortable and maybe play better. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not a musician myself, but. In, in that respect, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not even. I'm, I'm really serious. Yeah. Uh, it, it, my, my, I love making somebody confident and uh, to play better and play stronger and to yeah. enjoy themselves more. And I yeah. hope that that's my, what my life's work has been. Yeah. After forty years of doing that, I hope. I yeah. hope it's been of some use. But personally, I go to a party and somebody say to me, "Oh, you're a professional musician. I like, do something," and I wouldn't be able to do anything. You know? So, you know, I, I'm such a bass guitarist. That's a great service, though, to me. Yeah, well, uh, it's what <laughs> I do me, anyway. Yeah, you're, you're saying you're like a, the, an energy an energy musician. Yeah. And I think that's that's what people feel, like, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Like the the listeners, you know, they're, yeah, they're feeling the energy of, of the session. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's the way you've learnt it has been, it, it wasn't from a kind of, Cerebral sort of no. place that was from live, living and breathing it yes. for yeah, I did a live long and breathe time. It. I still yeah. live and breathe it. Yeah, yeah. It hasn't changed at all. Yeah. From like my life at 63, I'm 63 years old now, is the very same as my life at 20 in that respect. Hmm. And in most respects, it's, um, it's just tunes hmm. and, and, and songs and, and hmm. uh, playing with people I like and, and, hmm. and hopefully like me. And, um, Pub workers, I love pubs, and, and, and there seems to be a lot of concerts coming up now, which is a huge surprise to me. The band are great, the fiddle case are great. Mm. They're, 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 Adam Shapiro is, is a, I think he's, a, he, he's an inspiration for any musician that's not from the tradition. Uh, Adam's from South Africa, and he's one of the finest, finest, most empathetic musicians I know. Mm. And what a man to back a song, like I've never heard anybody like it. So I'm very lucky, Kieran and mm. John O'Connell are in the band as well, and they're fabulous singers and fabulous mm. musicians. And if, they're, if, if I'm doing anything, it's again, it's putting a bit of energy into them in, in, and, 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 and uh, making them less precise. <laughs> and, and that's all right, I'm happy with that, you know, because you know, a lot of musicians are precise now and rehearsed, and I, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of going, you know, watching bands and, 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 and they're all, they know what they're going to do before they go on the stage, every mm. note, and they even know where they're going to go up or, or when, mm. and then the dancers will jump out and everybody's smiling. I'm sick of it. Mm. You know, uh, the, the great musicians that I met as a young fellow, even I recorded some of the older musicians, and I'm still recording some of the older musicians, they, they, they didn't know, they play every time different, and one take was enough for them. Mm. That'll do, that's why I play. Yeah. You, you were saying, like, with the fiddle case, you wouldn't know from song to song, kind of what you're do, going to do next, and that is part of your whole... No, I, I, the songs we'd know, we'd have that tunes, worked out, but sorry. Adam, I've always been in bands where, like even playing with Yvonne Casey and Quentin Cooper years ago in the, in the Cayley Bandits, the, the, and also in the Fiddle Case, Adam would be the, the man that plays the tunes, mm -hmm. the, the, John can play tunes as well, and, but um, so I, even if we'd be doing a big gig, it would be very important that we don't know what Adam's going to play next, or he wouldn't know what he's going to play next. Because then he just turns around E minor or, or G, and we, myself, John, would know the mm. interior would be playing the bower on and, and, and uh, it keeps us alive. And it's, it's pro I love it mm. because it's, it's real. And mm. you get a lift when you, yeah. you know, some people just pick the right tunes mm. and they, you know, they, they never disappoint you. Because mm. the wrong, I, somebody plays the wrong tune to start of the session that I'm doing a gig with. The first tune is vital, just to get that groove mm. established. And if somebody starts playing a tune that changes the key three times, like it's just like, ah, shite. Like we're um, you were talking there about the, the nya of, yeah. um, of, of music, which is kind of this, for some people, this elusive in traditional music. How, how would you describe it? Like the... I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. No, but I know when I hear it. Like, but... but, but um, like sometimes uh, music can be very linear and, and mm. some of the, the greatest traditional musicians play like that mm. and, and people love it mm. and I, I can like listen to it too but I, can't, I don't enjoy playing it. I can't play it. Um, there's just moments you just know that I, I remember meeting um, the two Queely sisters for the first time, Yvonne and Pamela Queely, they were very very young and we were playing a big session and I just knew when I was listening, uh, Pamela, I don't even think he was there, it was Yvonne was on, Pamela wasn't playing a banjo at the time, she was very, very young. 
Yvonne might have been about 16, Yvonne Queenie. And it was the way she just pulled out a few notes and the, the, the constitution came out of one bit at one stage, you know, and that, that expression of, of um, the first time I heard Jackie Daly, Jackie Daly used to be the most exciting, is still very much the most, but for us in, in, in 1983, 1982, 83, 84, Willie really Clancy Week, or just to, to see Jackie Daly walking along the road and Willie really Clancy Week was like watching the greatest footballer for sports people, it was like watching, the, for me anyway, and I think for a lot of us, Jackie used to play an E-flat, Paolo Soprani accordion then, but he'd be playing a tune, and out of nowhere, he'd pull a big drag out of it, mm. and the whole crowd would roar because they'd feel something pagan. I don't know if that's the right word, but it, for me, it was. It was like a little bit breaking the rules, and it was like a little bit of personality. Mm. They, they, that's where the yeah, is, you know. It's, and also, you can have those lovely sessions with the younger, at your age group. There's a lovely session going on always at Willie Clancy Week um, in the room beside, it's Freels, but it's the far room, Derry Kiki and the few of that uh, crew, the, the freelance from, from, from Waterford. Now, I would sit in there, anytime I'm at Willie Clancy, I would sit in there for a couple of hours and never play, just yeah. listen. McDarrow yeah. Freeland would be playing the bazooka, I like him. Yeah. It's very good. But they love their music. They have the yeah, Connor Connolly, all those young musicians. Yeah. They, they, I can't describe them, yeah, but, but I, I know yeah, when I'm there, yeah. I can't leave the room yes. when it's there. Yes. Uh, it's just a groove. It's not, it's, it's, look, at it's emotion. Yeah. Some people just learn how to play. Mm. A lot of people just learn how to play, their families play, their, uh, they just learn how to play. All the people that I hang out with, not all of them, but nearly all of them, found it mm. and got very excited about finding it. Mm. That's who I am anyway. Mm. I'm not from the tradition. Mm. Yeah. And it kind of gives me, a, a, as a radio presenter, it, it's kind of interesting because I love the tradition. Mm. I love the music. I absolutely adore it. And, uh, but when you love something so much, you can't like 100% of it. You can only like maybe 20%. I mean, you can only love 20% of mm. what's out there. But uh, it's, it's, it's great to be an outsider mm. presenting this music to people who are born and bred with the music and saying, this is why I love it. Mm. What do you think? Yeah. Um, my last chat uh, with Nuala Kennedy, I ended, we talked about uh, Kitty Hayes. And mm. uh, I know that you have you played with her and it's someone I heard you describe as having that. Uh, well, you're, you're talking about Nya, Kitty Hayes. Yeah, yeah. Was, that's exactly what Nya is to yeah, me. Yeah. And I, don't want to, I don't want to say that word again, because it's not even a bloody word. But you know, yeah, 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 it's, yeah. it's grew. I, 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 I was lucky with Kitty Hayes. I was, I was, Custy's music shop wasn't as busy as it is now and I was in there by day, a lot of days. Mm. Uh, it was Francis Custy and I would be sitting behind the counter and, uh, playing tunes with people. It was, it was an awful lot of instruments then. Mm. There wasn't as many CDs out probably. But um, it wasn't as busy, so we played tunes all day in there. But this lovely woman came in with her son Joseph and uh, her her daughter Angela, and they wanted to buy her a concertina for her maybe her seventieth birthday. Uh, and she's very particular. Kitty was so particular, mm -hmm. but I think she also enjoyed coming in. But she only had half a tune at the stage. I mean, she had thousands of tunes in her head, but she was playing the concertina. It was a national concertina. And she was thinking about buying this one, but she'd come in every day and I'd sit down with the bazooki and play lightly with her. And she ended up coming in on her own, like her, her, her son and daughter were there. She'd come in most days. It took her about three months to buy the concertina. In the meantime, we were working really nicely. And uh, I was just watching her develop and the tunes coming back to her. And the, you know, the tunes were in her head coming out. And I couldn't believe that somebody could play such a beautiful rhythm. Mm to these tunes that I love and, and all of a sudden basic tunes were becoming like works of art. I mean mm. that because of the rhythm mm. and because the fact that this woman, her whole body was, Kitty's whole body was was, was taken by the tune mm. and, 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 and she was a, such a beautiful lady and I ended up recording her in her daughter's house, Angela's house here in, in Ennis and uh, she forgot she was going to record her. We had the equipment behind her like, and uh, eventually she was just playing and we made a lovely record called A Touch of Care. And I started getting her a few small gigs. We, we did a sm few small gigs together. And then as the years went by, Kitty started getting me big gigs. <laughs> <laughs> and we ended up, I remember we had a memorable concert in um, Martin Hayes. There's a fantastic festival down in Bantry House mm -hmm. in August, um, Masters of Tradition. And Kitty and myself were invited. Kitty was invited, but I played with her, so I got the gig. <laughs> and uh, we, we played with Martin and Dennis 
uh, we, we, we did half the gig and then Martin Hayes and Dennis Callan joined us and uh, it was a big moment mm. for all four of us I'd nearly yeah. say I'd nearly say Dennis and Martin were just as uh, Kitty loved Martin and uh, she, she that was the first time she'd met him but she would have heard about the radio all the time she listened to the radio all the time like, you know the music all the time she was a wonderful woman and then she, she passed away and uh, I think she'd fulfilled most mm. things she'd, she'd made uh, she'd made some beautiful albums with uh, Peter Laban, uh, a great piper from up in Milltown. So I think she'd definitely made, I think, three albums. Uh, but two were definitely made before she passed away, between the age of 70 and 80. I thought that was a really inspiring mm -hmm. thing for for older people. Yeah. Life begins in your 70s. But music, <laughs> you music, music is, a, is powerful. Nuna Kennedy would, 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 herself and Tara Breen, do some lovely things about yeah. Um, uh, insights into and, and adding their music to older music, beautiful uh, yeah. project. They're two great women, and then uh, the thing that Nuna would have in common with Kitty is Kitty was a beautiful singer as well. Yes, yeah, mm. her voice, yeah, was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. But music it keeps you. It, it's an ageless thing, and I'm yeah. very aware of that because I, I play a lot with young young kids and uh, a lot with old, really old people, you know, mm. and. Uh, I, I was young myself and I remember being the youngest in, in the in the scene in Dune. I remember being 20, 21 years old and the youngest of all the musicians and so hanging out with all these lovely, mainly men in those days, but uh, even the non-musicians, you go into O'Connor's pub, we, we lived in pubs. We actually really literally lived in them. I lived beside McGann's pub in, in a blockhouse, it was called, with Johnny Keenan, the banjo player, uh, for a year before I, I, I found my own place. But um, the pub was ever, but we all you could spend the whole day and you i did spend the whole day with uh, many many old men along barn on o'connor's every one of them wearing a peak cap and every one of them wearing a jacket you know and it, it was beautiful i learned so much from people that had never ever been to galway or dublin or anywhere and they they not all of them there was some of them had never been and i was fascinated by this and i was fascinated by their wisdom and how E easy it is not to want too much out of life and be had have a nice life. Mm. A lot of them were bachelors; they were lonely, but the Pope kept them happy. And Dal O'Connor and Theresa McGann and Patsy McDermott were very important women in the lives of a lot of us. Mm. In, in, in for many years in Dublin, mm. they, yeah. they 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 were. It was a home in those mm. pubs. We we had homes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's it's been absolutely fascinating to talk to you. I could talk for another <laughs> many hours about all, with all your stories and um, yeah, just the way you've learned and the way you've come to music. It's so um, organic, I guess, like, and so uh, true, total immersion. Just what, 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 what's a better thing to do, Louise, yeah, than, than, yeah, than, than to hang out with musicians and play tunes? <laughs> like, I mean, really, there is nothing better. <laughs> yeah. It's like uh, Roy Keane was talking uh, about about um, being a footballer. He, mm. he just couldn't get his head around that he was getting paid for it, yes. you know. As yeah. well as as well as going out and playing playing football yeah. with the best team in the world, maybe you know. So yeah. like uh, for me, the best team in the world is in is in all the music pubs in County Clare, mm. and it's very much a County Clare thing. It's it's it just happens to be here, like you know. Uh, it's it, it, here. Yeah, no, but it's it's everywhere here, and it's still here, yeah. and it'll always be here. There's, there's, there's such great music here and so many great teachers that are teaching people how to how to respect the music as well mm -hmm. as play the notes. Mm -hmm. well, I'll leave it on that note. Thanks, so. Louise. <laughs> Thanks a million. Thank you for listening to the Music As podcast. I hope you enjoyed today's interview. You can follow the podcast at Music As Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and now on YouTube also. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the podcast if you enjoy it. See you next time.